Hey Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with some more Middle Earth action as the armies of the East are marching into a trap in today's Dawnless Days video and we have a 3v3 scenario here, an ambush scenario as we have one Eastling and two Karnish armies and they are marching towards their doom as they march towards two Dorwinian and one Iron Hills army in this sort of like, uh, like ambush scenario I guess. It's like, I guess? The Eastlings and Kanda on the march westwards and first up against them on their march westwards are Dorwinian and the Iron Hills. And I guess Dorwinian set some sort of like a trap here to prepare for uh, the Eastmen and are ready to receive them. We've got some pretty cool units here. We do have, uh, for Khan, we do have the Lost Factions uh, support on along with obviously Dorwinian and uh, Iron Hills being involved in the Lost Factions as well. Some cool units. Including these crossbows, these dominion crossbows, which have a very good angle, I'd imagine, uh, onto the uh, the locum down there, and the runic warriors. I think there's actually some uh, runic warriors going in first. But there's loads of cool you new yet. And yeah, if you're enjoying seeing the Middle Earth action at the moment, I would like to see some more Lord of the Rings content. Do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment show your support. It really does help out the channel. And yeah, we do have. Uh, like the runic troops here, they are like getting very, very close in. They actually look really cool. Don't often see the runic warriors, but they also, they really do look actually quite cool, I think, for a lightly armored unit. Like, they're kind of badass. Then we've got Locurium archers in here. Looks like then further back, we've got more runic warriors and the like Locurium themselves. Uh, Locurium wards of room. We've also got clan raiders here and some pole arms, some halberdiers. This is all these things, jeez. And then over here, we also have. And um, is this more Eastlings? Or do we have two Eastling armies, in fact? I think we have two Eastling armies. Not just, uh, not just the one, but we have two. Okay, that makes sense, the amount of stuff. And then there's a lot of Carnage troops there, a lot of Carnage Cav as well. So this is going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. It does seem as though the uh, ambushes are uh, outnumbered, but uh, we will see how they can do. I mean, they certainly have the quality, and like that final stage of the, uh, of the Iron Hills is going to be a pretty rough one, that's for sure. But yeah, we'll see how far the... Uh, the troops go in. They are looking like they're stopped for the moment. I don't know if they're just waiting on their, uh, the rest of their troops. Who knows? Looks like Khan has a lot of other troops back here that they're waiting, keeping in reserve uh, that they can't really send in. Khanish infantry is pretty sucky, so I mean, I'm not expecting much uh, like success there, but we will see. But yeah, Khan, oh, we got Eastern Legionaries. These are pretty good. Their shock's pretty good, and some of their spears are okay. The Berserkers, very vulnerable to archers, but yeah, it does seem as though they're still moving in now. These guys must be sensing that they're about to get ambushed. And there you go. The first shots have been fired. So there you go. We have crossbow fire being sent in. It looks like they're shooting at those uh, local macemen down there, which is not a bad idea. I don't know if they can actually really scale this hill. But here we go. Some volleys going off from the crossbowmen. And there you go. The first shot of the battle. The first action. The first few bodies start to drop for the Eastlings. And there, it looks like as well we've got some archer volleys coming in. We've got the... Uh, Vineland uh, Seafarers here, just like a militia bow unit here. I haven't actually got any arrows, but then they appear at the last second as they fly through the air. Certainly, definitely would be focusing down these like runic warriors and things like that. Maybe taking out these archers if they can. I don't think they have any cav uh, as Darwinian, but that would be certainly something I would be um, throwing down as well. But yeah, these guys getting hit from the forest. Loki and Mason are actually getting hit hard from these crossbows. Jeez, it's brutal actually. Um, those crossbows damn well are, are effective. They are very, very good. But yes, if you want to get involved in some Dawnless Days action or just any scenarios on the uh, on the channel and any extra stuff, feel free to join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. And some volleys coming in there on the Clan Raiders. But yeah, we are very close to a thousand members. So if you want to be a part of that awesome, awesome community that we have going on there, feel free to join the uh, the Discord. The link, like I said, is down below in the description. And there you go. Clan Raiders getting focused down. This is a good unit to take out. Uh, we'll take minimal ammunition to take out. And there's a cav unit being taken out. It may be only a light cav, but they're always dangerous. You can see here, the runic warriors are dashing to just get through the uh, through the ambush. I guess the objective of the Eastlings and the uh, and Khan is to get off the other, get off the other side, get over to this corner over here where the uh, where the Iron Hills are waiting for them. So yeah, we'll have to see how they can do there. Um, but yeah, first first few little uh, conflicts starting to take place, and it does seem as though. Uh, Darwinian is also shifting over his infantry. All of his infantry, by the way, has jabbies, which is such an annoying thing that Darwinian has available to it. Um, because, yeah, these jabbies, I mean, they could take out a lot of cav. 
Uh, if a cav charges them, like, these guys just throw their javis and they break up the charge. But yeah, Dawny infantry in there should do some pretty damn nice work. We'll see. If I was the crossbows and the archers, I'd start firing at these um, halberds. And I think they just have the locrium halberds are now being focused down, unfortunately. Look at that rank one rank of Eastlings coming in. But yeah, there you go, the locrium. They'll, they'll, get, they'll get focused down a bit by bit, I imagine. These guys, are, I don't think, have a great missile block. They've already lost one man, actually. But yeah, it looks like the, the, uh, the actual... Like, infantry fight's about to begin. Runic Warriors here getting javi to pieces by uh, violent men at arms. And in go um, so some sword militia as well, some violent sword militia. Runic Warriors, yep. Yeah, Already getting killed off. Look at that. The Javi's coming in. Just absolutely evaporating that unit over there. Poor guys. They didn't even stand a chance. So it gives them a literal chance to actually, you know, do some decent damage. Get some kills. They're facing something a bit similar tier to themselves. I think they both are. Well, they're trained, actually. They're levy. So Rooting Warriors, in theory, should win that fight. Shark infantry coming in now. Heading in the forest here. We've got some elite shark infantry. Wars of Rune going against Vineland men at arms. Good volley there. Does take some damage. Does some, do some damage onto these uh, wards of rune. Killing like eight of them. It's not bad. And I'm sure they're going to get focused down as well, these guys, unfortunately. The defenders still do have a lot of ammunition. It seems... I mean, are they going to uh, attack the other side? Are they like, Dorwin going to come across, squish these guys? I don't know. There is like... And then there's Dorwin troops up here as well that they might want to bring in and try and help in the fight, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, Violent Men at Arms and Hirians, Runic Warriors. Violent Men at Arms should win that fight pretty easily. Loki Rimmon losing as well with this because they've been focused down so much, I think. Halber Deers actually got out of there pretty scot free. Yeah, Dorwin in infantry over here actually beating back the Loki Rim. That's impressive. How long that will last, I don't know. That might probably be because of Archer support and Javis as well doing a lot of damage. But yeah, this certainly makes for an interesting different like sort of battle uh, that we don't often see in Dawn States. That's an ambush battle. Uh, something that I hope that like the devs would add in maybe as like a, some unique sort of like ambush maps. I think we do have one in Athelion, but some more would certainly be cool um, for sure, I think. Look like we have Khan now on the move, and here we have Carnish Raiders on their way. Look at that rank upon rank of Carnish troops. Khan being the new faction that's been added in Last Breath. And if you're looking to get Last Breath as a sub mod for Dawn States, you're wanting to try out these new factions, the link will be down below in the description as well. For you to go and check out the uh, awesome new units there. And we do have another clash of infantry, Avari Warriors going in. So, yeah, a cool unit that the. Uh, that Dawning have is some elvish units of their own. So they actually do have elves here fighting alongside them. So we do actually have men, elves, and dwarves here fighting today, weirdly enough. But these Avari warriors, even for a spear unit, are elite. They get like 200 kills usually. Easy. They're really hard to kill. And there's only 85 of them in the unit. The reason for that is because they're goddamn powerful. Dawning crossbows being focused down. Looks like by runic archers, perhaps. So even though these crossbows are damn well effective, they uh, are very vulnerable to archers, it seems. And what else we got back here? Got Avari Wanderers, another elven unit back here. These are like a heavy uh, bow unit. Doing their bit. Uh, I hope they'll get some decent kills. They are obstructed at the moment. We have Cav as well back here. Merchant Escorts. So yeah, Dorwin isn't really known for his Cav. So they might get outmastered there in a Cav fight. Yeah, Loki Rim started to turn this fight around against some men at arms in a few places now. It's just like the impact of the ambush starts to subside and the eliteness of the Loki Rim is coming through. So let me know in the comments, guys. Who do you think is going to win? Do you think it's going to be the Loki Rim or do you think it will be... Well, not the Loki Rim. Do you think it's going to be the Eastman, the Easterlings? Or do you think it's going to be the Dwarves and Dorwinian? I guess I can't forget Khan as well. Khan is also going to be uh, helping to win this game today. 
But yeah, Halberd's going in, taking some casualties, fighting off against militia now, so the militia probably will die here. Just keeping themselves speared on these halberds. And I think just like that, they've routed. So really, I mean, they should just carry on, just keep pushing onwards. Do have a little cab unit here, just getting swamped by uh, merchant escorts. But yeah, they should just push on, just press on if they can. The Eastlings here, it's, a, it's very chaotic. The general here, oh my gosh, this ward rune general is getting focused down, down to 67 men. Yeah, they are focusing down. They're going to try and take, him, take out this army through morale, I think. That's their plan. Yeah, I mean, look at this unit. It's getting dropped. I mean, all scope like missiles being thrown onto these halberds. Clan guards are here as well. More runic warriors. It's looking rough. And here come the uh, the reinforcements. More door winning infantry, it seems like. Mostly. Are we going to see Javis get thrown in? I don't know. Maybe not. Oh my gosh, there you go. General is dead. So that is the general here. Dead for these things. He's just got focused down. But Khan is on the way. So fresh troops are arriving. And they know about the uh, ambush now. It's not like they've actually managed to clear up and destroy the first Eastling army so that Khan can be ambushed. Then Khan's going to come straight into a raging fight. Infantry here come by even. Locurian marches, you know, just moving up. You know, all these Carnish raiders and more like Eastling archers as well. Yeah, there's just so much, so much. It seems like the um, the entire Eastling and Carnish army now is on the move. How much of it? There's uh, I feel like they could just push on. They could just leave their uh, their allies here to fight this out. I think eventually you'd imagine these things would overwhelm Dorwinian, but. I don't know. It's really hard to say. Dorwinian infantry, though, is exhausted. He's getting absolutely battered. More of it over here is starting to break as well. As the archers going into combat, it's never a good sign. And what else is going on here? Spears, look at this. I told you guys. The Avari warriors, they don't mess about. Winning decisively. It's a spear unit against Loki Rim. Not many spear units you could name that would take on um, like Loki Rim and win. Hand over fist. Again over here, another unit of Avari warriors. Clearing up here. I think they're limited to three an arm like three spears an army. I hope they've brought like three of them because they're gonna need all of them to get as many kills as possible. Make up for uh where some of the militia units maybe have uh, disappointed Darwin in here. But um yeah, it looks like Cav over here. We've got Carnish Cav now. This Carnish Cav cataphracts getting some good charge onto the Vari Wanderers here. And Darwin in infantry as well, trying to come and cross me with support. Against the cataphracts, but it's it's a big ask. That is for sure. There's still plenty of swords available. I, I would honestly just get these guys into the fold. I just get them in the now. I mean, they've got lots of Vineland, Vineland uh, men at arms here, and we've got Seldwin bridge wards here. I assume some very elite pole arms. Um, you could all almost get the pole arms, just put them across the road, and just try and just block the road. It's a potential strat. I mean, Carnage is moving on. He's just not stopping. Got all these like. Kandish um, Raiders and yeah, these Kandish Raiders as well. They just have their shields on there, like above their heads. And we've got Variags here as well moving forward. Yeah, they're just not slowing down. The militia here are just getting, well, they're not even militia, these are archers just getting carved up. The rear charges from these Carnage Cataphracts now are starting to also influence the fight here. I mean, I don't know why Dorwin Infantry was really fighting the pole arms. Uh, it's not exactly a good fight for the pole, uh, for the uh, Dorwin Infantry, sorry. They're just running into the pikes and getting themselves killed, or pole arms, I should say. They're running into pole arms and getting themselves killed. Cav here just rushing down the road. What have we got here? Carnage Outriders. 
Just gonna keep on running by. Um, I mean, there's crossbows and... I mean, it looks like the swords are also running for their lives. Getting out of there. They're like, yep, that's it. We're retreating. It's not looking good, that's for sure, for Darwin in this point. 5,800 against 8,300. Um, they need to kill a lot more of these East Slings if they can. So we'll see what they can do. Well, Carnage Berserkers in here, I just realized. They haven't taken any losses yet, but... Mass route going on there by these things. Lots of ro uh, rooting, uh, routing troops there. And we've got Eastern Legionaries there coming forward. But uh, there's not much to stop them. Just some Vineland, Vineland Spearmish and Avari Wanderers. If I was these uh, Legionaries, I'd be carving through these Spears now. Spears and Shock Infantry don't mix. Spears will die pretty easily. And these are Levy Spears as well. Against elite shock infantry. This is an easy win here for the spears. Uh, for the uh, shock infantry, sorry. If, I, if the spears win, I'll be flabbergasted. Looks like the spears here trying to deny the shock infantry getting a charge. It's not a bad idea. It's not really going to matter, I don't think. Avari, one, uh, Avari Warriors down here still getting, like, easy kills. I'm, I bet these guys have got, like, already 200 kills. Easy. And they haven't lost too many men. I think they were down to 70 or something. Yeah, 69. A funny number. Another one over here, 76 men. They're exhausted, but if they could just freshen up, then they're good to go back in and get some good kills. Oh, they're being recharged. That is not good. They need to turn around and face those low-key rim. But if we quickly look at the strategic map, just give you an idea of what's going on. You can see that Darwinian has been pushed back already from the road where they did ambush. And actually the other Darwinian army over here is just kind of uh, ignoring um, <laughs> the troops moving down the road. And it looks like they're going to be uh, smashing on in to the dwarves very shortly. Uh, the dwarves do have some Iron Hill war warriors. And we have also got some um, shock cab from Darwinian waiting in the wings. Um, but yeah, they, they are uh, they just kind of breezing past uh, Darwinian now, which is never a good sign, really, when you're trying to do an ambush. It's just like, um, trying to be annoying, just trying to like stay in the fight as long as possible with your forces. You're not trying to necessarily win your own fight outright. But you're trying to just weak, like as an ambusher, you're just trying to weaken the enemy so that the, the next person's ambushing has an easier job. And so on and so forth until eventually you just through a war of attrition, you win. Berserkers are in here killing off these Avari Wanderers. And we've got Khan raids over here. I mean their infantry is not great, like I said, for Khan, but. We'll see how they do. These Khan traders are coming in fresh into a fight against weakened infantry. So they do have that advantage on their side. I mean, just to see if Khan will just push on. I think he is going to. He's just pushing on. And he's just going to attack the dwarves. So, I mean, the dwarves, are hopefully, have got elite troops. They've got Iron Guards. They've got uh, Khan and River Guard. We've got Iron Fortress Guard. And yeah, this is an elite army. Iron Hill Warriors. Uh, Pikes over here as well. We've got Sharks Sons of the Hill. Yeah, so we got some uh, Matic Warriors as well. Yeah, we've got some elite troops here. Um, so I imagine uh, that you know, this Khan army is going to have a, a rough time. I don't know if they'll be allowed to flank around with their cav. Um, but I guess that's what the Dorwinian cavalry is there for, to maybe try and limit that. Also, um, Dorwinian here looks again, again could just make himself a nuisance and he could push up onto this tree line here and then just start to shoot against the cav and the uh, the infantry if he wants to but again is there is a risk because you just could get yourself just surrounded and overwhelmed a bit like what's going on over here not quite surrounded but overwhelmed like the initial ambush was really good it was a very very good idea 
but when the second army came in he just just been overwhelmed fresh troops just too much Vari warriors here easy killing off his berserkers you'd have thought the berserkers a shock infantry would have cleaned up these Avari Warriors is a speed but no, nope, they just defy everything the Avari Warriors are like, no, you're dismissed. You're destroyed. Cav over here, we've got some uh, Ak Ak Akha chosen. Definitely butchering that name, but they will just rear charge some infantry there. I don't think there's much left in this forest. I mean, what we've got here is some, probably some more Avari Warriors, yeah. The last brave few elves down here fighting and dying. And there you go, the elves defeated there. I don't know if the other elven units are alive. I'm gonna guess no. Uh, go back to the strategic map quickly. I mean, yeah, no, it's just literally a couple of units left here. One of them being the uh, the general, so um, yeah, that's not a good sign. We'll see where the other Dorwinian player reappears. I mean, how much damage has Dorwinian done? It's done about three thousand men damage, which is also about the same that the uh, the Eastlings and Karna put in against the uh, defenders. So that's not so good. And the reason that's not so good is because the defenders start with about 3,000 less men anyway. Yeah, these legionaries in here, they're starting to help beat off these Avari, no, uh, Avari warriors. We'll see how they do. Got the infantry over here ready to go. Cav as well. Looks like maybe they're... I don't know. Can they see these Dornian troops? Oh, they can. Are they going to charge them? They are getting shot at, so I guess that gives them the go-ahead to charge them, uh, charge the um, the crossbows if they wanted to. But maybe these outriders are scared of the jowies behind them. I don't know. But here we go. I think Cav coming in. As I say, he's coming up bit by bit, but he's finally made a decision. And the crossbows are taking everything very safely, and they are retreating. I'm gonna have a Cav charge here. Javi's going in. Oh, it's not bad, but it's not great. So I didn't kill that many. Weaken them, that's for sure. Cav here, yeah, should not have charged. He's losing decisively. Uh, needs to get out. It's melee Cav as well, so it's not exactly going to get great charges off. Still, those are Vari nobles hold over here. Oh, yeah, Vari nobles, I think. They're. Warriors. Why do we keep, want to keep calling them nobles? Well, I guess they probably are nobles as well. And there you go. I think they're broken finally. Down at nine men, they broke. Incredible. Oh, we've got horse archers here as well. Varric horse archers. A pretty solid horse, horse archer unit. I just march on. March on the dwarves. Let, just leave Dorwinian be. He's not doing anything there. Uh, general's the general fallen. So that's, uh, I believe that's the Avari uh, warrior general over here. Just dying. Rip in peace to him. But yes, I hope you guys are enjoying this ambush battle so far. It's certainly been an interesting one, that's for sure. Um, I have a few tips that I maybe would do. Um, I'd personally make it even. So, like, you have 4v4 or 3v3. Or 2v2, I guess, if uh, you need more, uh, can't get enough players. But, yeah, I'd, I'd always have the attackers out. Uh, the attackers outnumber the defenders. Well, I say that, actually. It depends on who it is. Um, if it's, say, like, the Wooden Realm, I'd have them have a smaller army. And then, like, say, they were amb ambushed by orcs. I'd have the orcs have, like, full stacks, and maybe, like, the elves have, like, 14, 15 units. Just to try and, like, even out a little bit. To give the orcs that little advantage while the elves have, like, 
the uh, morale bonus. Oh, morale bonus and just quality bonus. Oh, if I was a crossbow right now, I'd be gunning down these uh, halberds. I mean, they're, they're not low. They're pretty low, but I mean, here, yeah, look, baiting the steps also a pretty good unit to shoot. No, keep this up, crossbows, and you could maybe get a general here. 36, are they going to be able to do it? Oh, I don't think so, because I think Karnas realized we lost a lot of general unit there. Then we have troops clashing over here. We can see the crossbows retreat. They are. And now we're going to see Dorwin fight it out over this hill. Dorwin infantry going in here. Shame that Dorwin doesn't have any violent guard. They would be pretty useful right now. They are pretty damn nasty. Good infantry sword unit. And we got Cav now moving in behind. Look at that. And I think that's going to go either after the crossbows or it's going to go for rear charge. Oh, it's going to go for crossbow. Oh, uh, bolt. I think it was going to go for crossbows. It's charging to the infantry instead. Which initially, not a bad idea. But as a cavalry that's not shot cav is a risk of using it. And there you go. I mean, the uh, arc chosen there. Getting out actually casualty free, which is pretty damn impressive. If I was um, the dwarves or something, I'd be focusing down this bane of the step general as well, whilst uh, it's kind of just in the open. I'm free to take out. Carnage Raiders now moving forward. They can deal with the river guard. And in they go. Carnish Raiders are going to try and get a decent charge off. I mean, they might do okay initially with that being an axe unit, but in the long run, I think the Iron Guard will kill them. Oh, Iron Guard, the Carn. Carn and Red Guards. I do quite like these units. These Card and Red Guard kind of remind me of, like Dwarven Spartan. Someone made, uh, brought it up, and now I can't stop seeing it. Who are their red capes? They really do kind of look like Spartans a bit. Oh, and they are pretty good. They've got pretty good missile block. They've got pretty good melee defense. For a speed, anyway, that's a dwarf. I'm not surprised. Taking after their true dads, the Iron Guard. Best way to take out Iron Guard, I think, is either Hammer and Anvils or Shock Infantry. I think we're about to see Shock Infantry going in here. Looks like it's uh, Varag Warriors going in against the Iron Guard. I don't know if that's going to be enough. These Variags are kind of like Glass Cannons. They're pretty, pretty good in melee attack, but their melee defense is shocking. I just feel like these guys die so quickly compared towards Rune. I, mean, I think we've also got Berserkers. Oh, no, these are Varags as well against Pikes. That is not a good idea. Seeing Javi is being moved across, not a bad idea. We do have Cav now in here. Oh, look at that, they're trying to take out these Sons of the Hill. These Kandish, what are they, Kandish Riders. Taking out Sons of the Hill, one of the most elite axe units for the Dwarves. But yeah, if you're enjoying the content, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. It really does help out the channel. And um, like I said, feel free to go and send in your replays as well to the Discord. The link's down below in the description. It's always a great way to support your channel, uh, to support like me as a channel. Send in some of your content. I might then cover it. It gives yourself about 15 minutes of fame as you just watch your video and watch your mistakes being shown off on, uh, on telly. The Iron Guard here, I mean, they're not going to break be broken through anytime soon. 
Unless they can flank round, which uh, currently they can. The Iron Guard do not have enough troops here. Or the Iron Hill, sorry, do not have enough troops here to uh, to stop them. But, I mean, I guess the Cav can maybe cover it. Uh, and also the far left as well. There's plenty of gaps here that are the that could be used. So, they've got a few options. Karn and River Guard here. Easy to get out of Rohan's sentries. Doing a very good job. Rohan sentries. I just said Karnish sentries. Karnish raiders. We'll get there eventually. Jeez. Clearly I'm going mad. Karnish raiders. In my head, I'm clearly thinking about Rohan. I mean, I have been reading about them a little bit recently, but. No excuse. Little Dwarven Spartans poking away. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. His Iron Guard Warriors as well. Or Iron Hill Warriors, sorry. Are very good. And they've got Silver Chevron, so they're going to be even better today. Uh, Carnage Raiders are starting to ra uh, waver. Uh, like I said, they're not great. Uh, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised they even lasted this long. Um, they, yeah, they're really, really poor. I mean, they've got plenty more infantry over here, and Dwayne is... Well, he's pushing... He's pushing the, uh, the... Dwayne troops around a little bit. Looks like Dwayne, though, is still... Having to take on Cav. We've got Cav here, Arc to Chosen here. And also these, uh... Halberdiers, all oh, coming up with legionaries as way. Oh no, they're not. They're Wayne Rider Spear Warriors. Another cool unit though. And we've got archers now flanking around here. We've got Carnage Bowmen. So they're going to try and go for flank. Whether these, um, oh no, these are very egg, sorry. So they will not be helping against these uh, these archers here. But um, yeah, the Cav here in behind can maybe try and do some decent damage. I think Dorwinian is not long for this world. He is not long for this world. Crossbows engaged as well. It's not a good sight. I mean, the uh, the attackers seem to cut kind of short on infantry. I mean, or it could just be stretched over, but it's about 3,000 now versus 5,700. So that's not too bad at all. The dwarves racking up some kills here for sure. I'm sure a few of these swords with their silver chevrons have got incredible kills. Probably 200, 300. And there you go, Cav winning out on this flank over here. That is a surprise. That was a very good riders losing to uh, Gwyn and Sentries. As Gwyn and Sentries are only like uh, mid tier, so they're not like great. We've got Carnage Cataphracts here, taking on the rest of the Cav as well. I don't think these ones are um, able to get a charge off these uh, Dorwini ones, they might suffer. They're not losing yet. It does seem as though the dwarves are pushing back the uh, the Eastings at the moment. Are oh, we going to get a Javi throw here? Oh, Javi's or axes, sorry, going in this direction. Taking on Eastern Legionaries. There you go, throwing their axes. Fly, my pretties, fly! And they are, yeah, doing a decent amount of damage. Gives them actually some decent accuracy. And hitting and killing these, uh, these Legionaries here. It's really good to see that the axe throw is being used. Often don't see them being used, and I'm glad that the devs of the submod did make them kind of effective as well. Like axe throws with dwarves, a cool unit, should be effective. Carnish Bowman, they're going into combat.
The center seems like it's going to hold for a long time, that's for sure. Gwyn in center is getting shot at. Uh, Dorwinian looks like he's just been overwhelmed. He's getting shot on the back. Like, Khan's just fl uh, flying around. I don't know what the um, rules were. Like, usually if we do ambush battles, I have to stay to the road. Because, like, the idea is, like, you wouldn't dare run off into the forest because... You don't know what's in there. You don't know if there's more enemy troops. So you should just really stick to the road. Um, but I guess they can come off the road here because so is uh, the Iron Hills. They're off the road. It seems like... Yeah, they're routing troops over on this side pretty effectively. This is a lot of Carnage troops on st starting to go. Some Iron Hill warriors, though, also in trouble. And we also still have a few, um, like, Dorwinian troops. Are Actually, no, I think they're all gone now. Rip. We have the Iron Fortress uh, Guardians here, which are an elite cross -feeding. These guys have better morale, uh, better morale and better melee attack than some of um, their normal infantry, which is incredible. But they're actually re retreating. This Carnage Bowman, not interested. And there you go, some routing uh, Iron Hill Warriors just going there. Two elite speed units, they're fighting it out now. I mean, Wayne Ryan does not down as an elite, but I'd count them as that. They are pretty damn effective. We still have one healthy Sons of the Hill here as well. Some very good shock infantry that we need to, uh, that the dwarves need to pre preserve. But yeah, it just seems like there's a lot of range units left. That's the that's one of the problems for the, uh, for the Iron Hills. They've got to deal with all of that. Uh, and now here we go. Matic Warriors going in. They're going to try and clash with these Carnage Bowmen. Probably get some easy kills here. Carnage Bowman are not going to withstand a charge from the Manic Warriors. And look at that. So many heads being knocked off their, off their shoulders from those uh, from those big heavy hammers. Very nice. And we have some Variags as well going around. They're actually a pretty good hybrid unit. Being both bow and sword and shield. The Carnage troops not so much because they ain't got that shield. I can't protect themselves. And in go the very eggs are going to surround these uh, Manic Warriors. And that might be curtains for the Manic Warriors. Looks like the Horse Archers here went for a charge. I have no idea what they went, went into there. But the Cardin River Guard... Just eating up this charge here. This is a really suicidal charge and a really costly by the Carnage player. Just charging in his uh, horse heart, just getting them killed. We've got a general here as well. Carnage general, he's in real trouble. He's getting spiked by Iron Guards here. He needs to be very, very careful. We've got, uh, we've got Javis over here. They're getting surrounded, sadly. So we can't see more berserkers in combat. That would be great. I think they've broken those archers. I mean, now they can rear charge all these pikes in the Iron Guard here. So uh, the general over here is now in real trouble. They are dealing with these Wayne Rider spears effectively, but it uh, might not matter. Problem with the dwarves is once their uh, enemy is in behind them, it's really tough for them to get them out from that position because they have no cav. So it's hard for the uh, dwarves just to like force the uh, the enemy cav or enemy infantry back away from their own rear line. Good thing most of the dwarven infantry can fight on quite happily while being surrounded. Numbers. Let's have a look at them quickly. Nine hundred against four thousand. It is not looking good, and a general has fallen for the dwarves. Even worse, so the doors are now generalist, leaderless. All hope may be lost. We might be about to see the armies of the east push ever west. Go. 
Going to see a rear charge coming in here. It's not that it's really going to be much of a difference. The Iron Guard here already surrounded. Fighting off against these Carnage Raiders. You can see a rear charge thing here though from the Wayne Rider Noble. You got the Sons of the Hill here, they're trying to uh, cut down what remains of these uh, this Cav Shock. And the Iron Fortress Guardians, well, not a bad unit to charge, but they are pretty damn elite. I wouldn't want to stay in here for too long. Yeah, this is a Wayne Rider Noble as the general. I'm surprised it wasn't a Bane of, Step, Bane of the Steps or something like that. But yeah, look at the amount of archer armor there's still left. There's certainly still, I'd say, a good, like if you put them all together, like a good three full units of ammunition. That's insane. They didn't even need all of it. Maybe I would have just instead just removed those and put in some more cheap infantry. I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, the Carnage troops here, they're just begging for a rear charge from their cavalry comrades. They really need one because otherwise that's the way they're going to break through that sword and spear line. But it's, uh, I mean, they're starting to see some gaps. We're seeing Varric Bowman now trying to surround these Karn and River Guard. I mean, they're exhausted, general dead. Morale could shatter for these boys any moment. And like I said, they're not Iron Guard. They're pretty good, but they're... The kiddies of Iron Guard in the Iron Hill roster. They, they, uh, Iron Hills will fight to the last man, even if surrounded. And you can see there, look at that Iron Hill, uh, Iron Guard, sorry. I keep calling them Iron Hills. Iron Guards are just like winning that fight decisively whilst being surrounded. It's nuts. Nuts. The Ark Chosen here getting a pretty good charge off onto the, uh, on the crossbows. Really well done there. And here we go. It looks like we're going to see maybe another charge in a moment, I imagine, from the Wayne Riders. But yeah, I mean, the dwarves are holding on. I mean, for now, just about actually still routing some troops. They have rallied, sadly, but it's natural. It's natural at this point to hear our men are leaving the uh, retreating and leaving the battle. The dwarves are just running out of men, running out of time. And there you go, Cav charging in the back of the Ark of Chosen doing their thing. Are we going to see another one? Oh, we did, in fact. We actually missed it. I do apologize. Wayne Rider is here charging. Will we get one more? Quite possibly. Troops start to waver. Oh, yeah, not looking good now. Mass wavering starting to take place here. Uh, even these Iron Guards here that are winning slightly. 77 men wavering gone just like that. And there you go. A valiant defeat for the Iron Hills and for Dorwinian. So this one was sent in by Omens, who was playing as one of the Iron Hill armies, uh, well, the only Iron Hill army, sorry. Did a very, very good job in uh, in this one. This is his scenario that he set up as well, so certainly it was an interesting one, that is for sure. But yeah, his Iron Hill, uh, his Iron Guard uh, General here getting 107 kills. Um, 100 kills for his swords here, 231, 278, some very good kills here. Mana Quarry is getting 173, Sons of the Hill... Uh, 124, uh, 219 with his uh, Khan and River Guard, his Iron Guard getting a 205 and still healthy, my gosh. 120 kills with the Iron Hill Pikes, and then the Crossbows down here getting 124 along with the Khan and Hunters. And Major Sharp playing as one of the Darwinian armies, and his Cav not doing much, Darwinian Crossbows 116, 200 kills with the Avari War, uh, Wanderers, and then he's got his Seldwin Bridge Wars here getting 174. Uh, Dorian Infantry, 105 kills, the best of the bunch. And then we've got uh, Kirilla Jax playing as the final Dorian army. 128 kills as the Vari Warriors. Uh, they actually did not do that as well. I thought they were going to get 200 kills, but 152. Still not bad. 202 kills with the Avari Wanderers. 294 with the other one. Cal, 148 kills. 217 with his Dorian Infantry. 108, 120 with the Violent Sword Militia. Then we have Chicken Wolf playing as one of the Eastling armies. 114 kills with his runic warriors, 167, and 168 with his macemen. His pole arm is doing really well, actually his best units, getting 217, 274 kills. They have Jolly Knight playing his Khan, uh, 96 kills with his Varig warriors here. Most of his raiders getting like no kills, 92. 
the best. Varag Bowman, 172 kills. Cav, Carnish Outrider is getting 120 kills. 148 with his Catafra. Oh, it's just Varag uh, Riders there. Then we have K1 playing as the Eastlings. 101 kills with his Wards of Rune. 103 with his Runic Warriors. Then his Maceman getting 138. 307 with this one. Incredible. And then, yeah, most of the rest of his army not getting much. And then Cyrus the Great playing as the final Carnish army. 125 kills with his Wayne Rider Nobles. 143 with the Berserkers. 144 with another there. His Eastern Legionaries, 279 kills. 369 kills. And then we've got his Raiders. His Raiders getting 114 kills. Spears, 102. Uh, his Carnish Sentries, 161 kills. 124 with another with a bow unit. Arca Chosen getting... Um, 305 kills and his cataphracts 248 kills so some very good kills there but there you go the armies of the eastlings and khan will march westwards and now will threaten erebor and dale in a, another battle i'm sure uh the all all of middle earth must now rally to face this new eastern threat in the next hopefully in another da dawn's day scenario i'd love to see something like that but until then guys i'll see you in the next one bye for now